Okay, it is Saturday evening, February 3rd, and considering the impactful nature of the storm that's bearing down on the bay for Sunday and Monday, we wanted to take a little bit more of an extended look and do a, a somewhat deeper dive on all of the different aspects this storm will be bringing, particularly through Sunday, and particularly from a wind standpoint. But the rain's the first part, and the rain is gonna have its own pick impacts here. We got a flood watch to talk about that stays with us for pretty much all of Sunday and, and Monday. And if we bring this back and watch it in the future cast, you see the leading edge of the rain bands, which overtake most of the bay as we go into the overnight hours. So here we are at nine o'clock on Saturday, and we're seeing a really well organized of line march across pretty much the Golden Gate, and then it gets everybody, and then it's just widespread steady rain. From about 10 o'clock Saturday night, taking us into the overnight hours through the pre-dawn hours of Sunday with a slightly heavier focus on the North Bay, you can see some of the heavier consistent showers there, as seems to always be the case, falling on the North Bay in the pre-dawn hours of Sunday morning. We're now looking at sunrise, and we're still seeing that same story, a very well-organized band of rain coming in across the North Bay, but everybody gets their share. And then by the time we get to noon, that first phase of the storm starts to wind down. So by that, I mean the widespread steady rain that really adds up for the biggest rainfall totals and leads to some of the higher concerns from a flooding standpoint is gonna happen between Saturday night late and Sunday around noon. And then by noon, watch what happens. That persistent wall of rain starts to move off towards the east, and then we get back into this pattern. And this will probably look real familiar. This is what the last several storms have done. This is what most winter storms do. You get the widespread steady rain first, and then you get the follow-up on again, off again, spotty, hit and miss showers. You'll be looking at a perfectly clear, calm day, and then all of a sudden the sky's gonna go dark, and you'll get a brief downpour of rain, maybe even some thunder, some gusty winds, and that's gonna be the scenario from the second half of Sunday all the way through Monday, and then by Tuesday we'll be done. But since the bigger impact from this, from the rainfall standpoint and from the flooding concern is going to be the rain that falls from Saturday night through Sunday right around noon, we're just gonna look at those totals here. And the timestamp up there shows you how much rain we'll have by the time we get to the early afternoon on Sunday. So it'll be raining at this point, but we'll be past the widespread steady big accumulations. And at that point, you've gotten about two and a half inches of rain in the North Bay. And that is a lot of rain for us. And this is part of the reason why there's a flood watch. And the usual concerns are gonna go along with that. Certainly the roads are gonna be an issue. So ponding of water on roads, um, low-lying intersections, which are usually problematic. If you know the ones for your part of town or the bay, those are gonna have issues with this one. And then the streams and creeks, which are not very well controlled, will be able to rise to their banks again. It doesn't look like a major flooding concern on the Russian River. The forecast models don't have that getting to even monitor stage, which is a Good sign for us overall in terms of the flood standpoint, because that's usually when you get into the big flooding event. So it's nice that that's not on the table. But you're still gonna have issues on the roads and for those smaller uncontrolled streams and creeks and for those areas that are maybe unstable on hillsides. And that includes even down here in the South Bay. Look at those rainfall totals. You're still looking at about two inches of rain here from now through about two or three in the afternoon on Sunday. And that's why everybody's got the flood watch. So when we look at the map, it's Bay Area wide, stays in effect until we get to 10 a.m. on Monday. That's how long it's gonna take for the heavy rain that's gonna fall primarily like Saturday night through the first half of Sunday to work its way through the system. And then you can't leave out the fact that on top of that, there will then be follow-up showers on again, off again, hit and miss showers. But the bulk of the problem is gonna come from that rain that falls from Saturday night into Sunday. So let's get a slightly bigger view on this storm because we looked at it close up. You could see what the rainfall potential is gonna look like in the overnight hours. But to understand why it's gonna take some time for this to finish with us and why the wind is probably gonna be a bigger aspect, we've gotta look at the storm from a slightly bigger view. And when we pull out for the wide view, you can see here's the center of the storm out here. And when we put the future cast imagery into it, you can visualize all the rain that it's pulling up from the southwest. This is the atmospheric river component of it. We're gonna look at this in a little more detail in a second, and I'll show you how this is a pretty good strength for an atmospheric river for the Bay Area, which is why the rainfall totals are so high. But it's also the center of the system that's gonna deliver a punch from the wind. Big picture view shows you why this takes so long. Here comes that leading edge, right? We talked about how we get the widespread steady rain that stays with us overnight Saturday into Sunday and how that's one chapter of the storm. And now you can see as the center of the storm right here comes on shore, look at the circulation. That's when we get back into those spotty on 
and off-again showers and isolated thunderstorms. The closer you are into the center of these storms where that spin is, that's where you get the most instability, the most lift. That's where these storms really have the most energy to develop some of those downpours from isolated thunderstorms. And, you know, this was the, this was the part of the storm where we had that um, confirmed video of a weak tornado in Sonoma County. That stuff happens in Northern California when we find ourselves in this part of the storm. It's very rare, if ever, that you'll hear a tornado watch in Northern California. In other words, you're not going to get a heads up because the ingredients are there. It's so rare that they happen, and they happen on such a fine scale, it's virtually impossible to see them in a forecast. But we've got similar ingredients as this system comes on shore to the one that was here towards the middle of the week. It's not a primary concern from this storm. EF zeros and EF ones typically don't do a whole lot of damage here, but it's still something to be aware of in terms of this storm's got a lot of energy to work with as we go through second half of Sunday and then Monday as well. We've got to really get through Monday before we're done with that. Okay, that covers the rain and the intensity of downpours. The other aspect, which I mentioned might be a bigger one, is the wind. And to understand that side of the storm, when we pull back and look at it on the big picture again and watch it in water vapor, this thing is only now starting to develop into a tightly wound area of low pressure. It wasn't there yesterday. And because it's developing so quickly, that makes it kind of problematic. First of all, it makes it really hard for the forecast models to get a handle on because they've got to pinpoint specifics that we really want to know before the thing has developed. And those are notoriously difficult for models to nail in the specifics. But we're close enough to it now that we are starting to get a much clearer picture on it. Here's what I want you to see from the wind standpoint. You just saw that area of low pressure on Saturday evening was just getting developed off the coast. When we watch the wind field and visualize that, as this thing winds itself up into tomorrow morning, let's come in for a closer look at that. Now you can see where the circulation is. It's right off the coast. So we've got this rapidly intensified area of low pressure right off the coast. And just on the edge of those is where you can get some of the strongest wind. And that's where we're going to find ourselves right here. That deep band of purple is different from a wind standpoint, from the last several storms that we've experienced so far this winter, because the centers of those either developed long before they got here, and we could see them on satellite and radar and point to them and say, here it comes. This one didn't do that. This one just kind of developed right off the coast. And you might have even heard the term bomb cyclone, which sounds way more dramatic than it needs to. But a bomb, a, bomb, uh, a bomb cyclone is a technical term that's been around for many decades. It wasn't, a, you know, something to get hashtags or clicks. And the only thing that's telling you is that the area of low pressure in this storm intensified very quickly in a 24-hour period. And we just saw what that can look like. And there are important things to take away from that when you know you're going to have one of those, especially if you happen to have it develop right off the coast like this one is. So let's talk about the wind. The high wind warning I mentioned might be one of the bigger impacts from this storm. And when we play this forward, as we got that big purple batch sitting right off the coast, we're looking at Sunday morning into Sunday afternoon and perhaps even Sunday like late-ish afternoon. Here we are at 3 o'clock. And at this point, you can see those streamlines really picked up. These are going to be strong southerly winds, color-coded on here. The deeper the shade of purple, the stronger the wind. There's one part of the bay that's particularly vulnerable to this more so than others. And that would be the mountains, especially the Santa Cruz Mountains, the coastal mountains of Marin, and the East Bay Hills, a little bit higher up. They're going to feel this system more as it moves across. And they also kind of take the brunt of this system. The rest of us are going to be windy as well. But there's a difference in terms of intensity. And you can see that when you look at it this way. So here's the way the National Weather Service is wording the wind concern on this storm. There is a high wind warning for basically all the mountains that ring the bay. And that goes from 10 o'clock on Saturday night until 10 o'clock on Sunday. This is where we have the potential for 60 mile an hour wind gusts. And should we get that, down trees will be very likely. So would widespread power outages because they'll take down a power line as they go. That's the primary concern here in the mountains. And for anybody in the mountains, like let's say in La Honda or anybody through even coast side, in uh, San Mateo County, you, you want to be aware of the intensity of the winds, definitely through the Marin coastline. But for the rest of us, if you live in that donut hole, you have something else. It's not a high wind warning, but it is a wind advisory, which is somewhat lower wording just to say, hey, you could have 40 mile an hour wind gusts, 60 in the mountains, 
40 down here where the rest of us live, same time frame, and 40 mile an hour gust, while not as concerning as the 60, is still enough of an issue to be aware of this because a 40 mile an hour gust can break a branch off, it can put debris on the road, it can still cause some trouble. So that's gonna stay in effect till Sunday night at 10. So that covers the rain and the wind. The snow in the Sierra is one other aspect from this, and we're just gonna broad brush this for now because there's so much else to talk about from this storm. In terms of snow in the Sierra, this is fantastic because it's gonna be very cold and very wet. Snow level's gonna get down to around 5,000 feet or 4,000 feet. That's excellent for building snowpack for what matters most to us, which is storing water. Many storms this winter haven't been able to do that. They've been too warm and the snowpack's been up high. The other aspect of it is it's gonna put down a lot of snow. I'm just showing you the passes to drive home one important point on this. Sunday and Monday are not going to be days to travel in the Sierra. And even if you think maybe you could, Caltrans is almost certainly gonna close the passes. That kind of snow coming in that much of a period of time, they'll close the passes. So just be aware of that if anybody was thinking they absolutely had to travel in the Sierra. It's really not even a possibility as we go through Sunday and Monday. And the ski resorts are gonna love this. That's a story for another day once the roads open and everybody can go up there and enjoy it. Okay, the other aspect about this, which I wanna make sure we cover here at home in the Bay, because we're gonna be hearing about it a lot in the media in terms of the significant risk that this storm is posing from a flood standpoint. And while we've talked about our risk here at home, and we've got things to be aware of and to be responsible for, and we wanna stay on guard, especially until we get through Monday, the real risk for a flooding standpoint from this storm is going to Southern California. And I just wanna show you why, give you a good idea of the difference for why it is such a bigger story in Southern California from a flooding standpoint. Here's our atmospheric river. We'll take a look at the scale in a second, but let's watch how that behaves over the course of the next few days. The focus of it goes down to Southern California and then sits there for a little while. We'll visualize it a different way. We'll watch the future cast. You can see we get our rain, we got a lot. We're gonna watch for flooding risk here. And then it gets to Southern California and look what happens. Very different. And it's gonna sit there for a little while. So there's gonna be a lot more rain getting pulled up this way. Now that takes us through Tuesday, we're not done, because after that, it's gonna migrate north again, and it'll probably sit there till we get into Wednesday. That's why this is such a different story from a rainfall standpoint and from a significant flood, uh, flood threat for Southern California. And you're gonna be hearing so much about this storm's potential for flood threat, and you're gonna go, what do I need to do? Well, you know what you need to do here, because we talked about our risk. But a lot of what you're gonna hear on social media and coming from all media platforms, it's gonna get muddled a bit, is really focused on Southern California. That's the big story here from a flooding standpoint. And this is gonna be one of the atmospheric rivers that ranks, just for perspective, here's the one that came through for us on Wednesday. That one was a category two on a scale of five. And the one we're gonna be experiencing Saturday night through Sunday is a category three. And that does elevate the concern for us as well because a category three, we'll just take a look at that scale slightly bigger. You can see the timestamp there. That's, that, that's enough for us here at home to at least raise the awareness level. This is gonna be a fairly big rain event, probably a little more so than the one that came through here on Wednesday. And it is a first alert day on Sunday and probably will also need to be one on Monday as well. We'll adjust it as we get closer to it. But we really wanna draw all of your attention here at home to the rain through Sunday morning, and perhaps maybe just as important, that wind threat that will stay with us going through Sunday afternoon. So it's a lot to cover. We wanted to just take a little more time with you here and go a little more in depth, but we will of course be tracking this in great detail across all our platforms. You can always find us on the stream for the latest updates. And by now, hopefully you also know where to find us on both uh, CBS News Bay Area for KPIX5 and on PIX Plus. Thanks for checking in.